we have always heard that the Portuguese and you know Sir Francis Drake and all that stuff I learned at school he traveled by the stars but we knew him a bit better because if you look at this plane if you looked around here you couldn't see it's a river over there so you've got to know somewhere how to get there so we had to use something as our navigation tool and that was part of it was whole nature the suns as I said at night the stars and you know when you listen to the stories of our different star system it makes a lot of sense. So Jude in this line here from this rock here which is embedded into the ground you have a straight line of rocks through here can you see that line here though? Um, that's where the um, sun will come down over the top of that last rock at the um, winter solstice, the shortest daylight day of the year. Um, from this point up to the three big rocks up the top, and when the sun hits the centre rock, um, it's um, equinox, 12 hours day, 12 hours night. This may be the oldest astronomical observatory in the world. Some academics have referred to the stone arrangement here as Australia's version of Stonehenge. I think the question we might have to ask is Stonehenge, Britain's version of Word Ewing, because this could be much, much older. If the site is more than 7,000 years old, it will rewrite history and further disprove the notion that first Australians were uniformly nomadic hunter-gatherers. It'll be the oldest known stone arrangement in the world that has some sort of solar alignments to it, which would be quite significant. As a scientist, the information that we see in sites like this and the knowledge systems tells us a bit about how humans understand the world around them. The colonial history of Australia says that Aboriginal people were nomadic, simple hunter-gatherers. And what we're finding by all the evidence mounting through research is that that's not true. The academic pursuit of Australia's Indigenous astronomy is relatively new. Dr. Duane Hamaker is one of the leaders in the field and is working with custodians like Reg Abrahams to reconstruct knowledge of the stars. Some information remains. One of the largest constellations, the Emu, found in the Milky Way is common in East Coast language groups. And those learning about it say the complexity of Indigenous astronomy shouldn't surprise anyone. I think a lot of um, places up towards north, because it's so hot during the day, they sort of travelled and moved at night and followed the stars. And it's, well, I guess, navigation tools. And I suppose that's something sort of really interesting and keen in um, getting, getting that knowledge back. In all these um, shallow areas where the Phragmites is, there would have been a lot of um, eels, um, and eel traps. Um, a lot of the old red gums, which you can see that um, they're in the river, the dead stumps, yeah. there would have been possums out here yeah. and um, all sorts of other foods, I suppose. So and permanent food source and permanent water source right here. Yep, yeah. yeah. Um, also, we've identified um, what we call gill guys. I think that's an Aboriginal word. It's basically um, terracing. Really? Yeah. Wow. So we hope to have um, archaeologists come out and do some um, testing. That's really interesting because it, it brings in one of the questions we have about the stone arrangement and sites out here. I mean, we know that Western Victoria seems to have a lot of permanent or at least semi-permanent sort of villages and houses and yeah. with the aquaculture and stuff. If you're going to have a stone arrangement where you mark off the seasons throughout the year, the solstices and the equinoxes, it kind of makes sense if you, at least most of the year, were in one specific location to do that. You see a lot of agricultural and aquacultural practices. So evidence of this agriculture may go back thousands, tens of thousands of years, predating what anthropologists normally think of as the dawn of agriculture, which is about 6,000 years ago in Mesopotamia. The location of the site is protected. These archaeologists, astronomers and anthropologists are some of the few to be shown around as they try to unravel the mysteries of the rocks. On the side of the equinox, you've got Orion framed perfectly. It'll be setting right over the, those hills. Yeah, but it's vertical. Well, the Orion's belt will be, but the whole thing of Orion. The Orion yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting an idea of when the site was constructed is next. Thermoluminescence testing is being suggested. It's been done at nearby sites where artefacts have been found. Um, other sites within the area, there have been um, thermoluminescence over at um, a sand quarry. Um, the dates on that come back at 11,400 and uh, then 14, 
they don't give you exact date, 11,400 to 14,700 years old. If you tested the ones that look like they haven't been moved versus ones that look like they have been moved, you can get an idea. The ones that have been moved should all be about the same date. We learn at school the different, the European names of our stars and the Milky Ways, but it's also to, good to know how traditionally we had a name for them as well. So yeah, it's good. Our gods were up there in the stars.